Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my Ohio garden. I am sowing the last of my spring planted carrots today, and I'm excited to share with you all this little test that I'm trying this year. I hate thinning carrots, but I also lack the patience to properly space them when I'm planting. Carrots are also notoriously finicky when it comes to germination. So I am on a quest today to find the best, aka easiest way of planting carrots that will number one, improve and speed germination, and number two, result in less thinning that I have to do. I got a ton of great suggestions from those of you who saw my post a couple weeks ago. Thank you very much for those recommendations. So I'm excited today to try some of these methods out. Now, number one is a cornstarch gel. Someone actually shared this with me last year and I didn't get a chance to try it then, but I'm doing it this year and I have to admit, this seems pretty ingenious. By mixing your carrot seeds into a cornstarch gel, you are in theory, keeping those seeds nice and moist until germination. And also by dispersing them throughout the gel, you're automatically giving yourself better spacing. Here's how I did it. I soaked my carrot seed overnight. I don't know that you would have to do this step, but I do find that in general, soaking seeds helps to get a jump start on germination. The next morning, I made my cornstarch gel. For a standard size seed packet, which with carrots is usually around 200 to 500 seeds, I made a mix of two cups water to four tablespoons of cornstarch. So I started with cool water in a saucepan, added my cornstarch, turned the burner on to medium, and just continued to stir this until it got nice and thick. I then let my cornstarch gel cool completely. Once this is cool, you can see how thick this gets. Next, I took my seeds and poured them into the cornstarch mixture. Now I did include some of that soaking water, just enough to get my cornstarch gel to a really nice consistency. Next, I added the cornstarch gel and carrot mixture to a Ziploc type plastic bag. Now I am ready to plant. To prep my planting area, I just made a shallow trench about a quarter of an inch deep in my prepared soil. And then I snipped a tiny hole in the corner of the Ziploc bag. This allows me to squeeze this mixture evenly or somewhat evenly into this furrow. And this process, for some reason, I just found bizarrely satisfying. So if this works, I'm gonna do this every single year. And finally, after I've squeezed all my gel into place, I'm gonna cover that lightly with soil, finely sieved compost or my earthworm castings and water this all in well. Now, method number two is seed tapes. And you can get these pre-made, store-bought, or do it yourself. This is how seed tapes typically come in these thin little strips where they have the seed implanted in between two thin layers of a paper that's almost like tissue paper, just a smidge thicker. I also tried out the DIY version, and I thought I was gonna hate making these. I thought it was gonna be really tedious. I actually really kind of enjoyed these. Now, this is definitely a project that's better suited for for those winter months, something you could do ahead of time and have them ready for spring planting. So I only made one. And for these, most folks use toilet paper, the cheaper the better, but other material like paper towels will also work. Now the typical advice is to cut your toilet paper into strips about an inch wide, but in my case, I'm skipping the cutting altogether and just going three rows of seed wide on this toilet paper. I'm making a paste out of one part water to one part flour, and you can add either more flour or more water to get the proper consistency. You just want something like a nice paste. And then using a paintbrush, or you can use a Q-tip, I'm placing small dabs of paste where I want to space my seeds. I'm just eyeballing these about an inch apart. And then before that paste can dry, place seeds on each of these little spots. Now I'm trying my best to do two seeds per spot. Carrot seed is tiny and that doesn't always happen in every spot. I know I've got a few more in here, but even with two per spot, this is gonna result in a lot less thinning than I typically have to do with my carrots. 
So I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit and these can be stored until you're ready to plant. I'm gonna go straight out into the garden and plant this. When I'm ready to plant, I'm just gonna make a shallow trench aiming for about a quarter of an inch deep and wide enough to accommodate the seed tape. And then I place the tape in the trench and very lightly cover with soil, finely sieved compost or earthworm castings. And then I'm gonna water this all in well. Method number three is to pre-germinate seeds on a paper towel. I found this idea on the Art of Doing Stuff blog, and in theory, I really like it. I've pre-germed my carrot seeds before, and it has definite advantages, but I never thought about planting the seeds paper towel and all. It's almost like a hybrid of the seed tape and the pre-germ method. For this method, I'm gonna take a very damp square of paper towel and place it on cardboard or something else flat and sturdy. I seed the paper towel with carrots at my desired spacing. So I'm again eyeballing it at about two inches apart across the entire paper towel. Once all the seeds are placed, I'll cover with another wet paper towel. And I actually ended up going back and putting a second paper towel on top. These were pretty thin and they were drying out quickly. Then I slide everything into a plastic bag and wait. Now I check this each day to make sure everything is still damp. If not, I miss the towels with a water bottle. Then as soon as the seeds have sprouted, typically that'll take about seven to 10 days, it's time to plant. I'm going to remove all of this from the plastic baggie, slide those paper towels off the cardboard, and in hindsight, I would have done this on something other than cardboard, something that would not have absorbed that water and become so flimsy because this is kind of hard to work with, maybe just on a dinner plate or something like that. Once I have my paper towels onto the prepared soil, I'll just remove those top two paper towels so that all I'm left with is the bottom towel and the sprouted seeds. And then I'm going to lightly cover that with my soil or sifted compost or earthworm castings. And again, that'll all get watered in well. Method number four is mixing the seeds with sand and broadcast sowing. Now mixing tiny seeds with sand is not a new concept. You'll often see things like wildflowers and grass seed mixed with sand because it helps to ensure that the tiny seeds are getting more evenly spaced out and that you're not dropping too many seeds in any one place. The general guideline is to use about four times the amount of sand to the amount of seed that you have. I'm doing a very tiny amount here, but this gives you the idea. I'm gonna mix these seeds in well, and then I'm just gently broadcast sowing this. So just kind of sprinkling my sand seed mixture across the prepared soil. You could also put the sand seed mixture into an old cleaned out pepper shaker and then just shake the seed out. And then again, when I'm done sowing, I'm just going to lightly cover with soil and water this all in. Now for my normal sowing method. Now I actually usually get pretty good germination results with my carrot seeds in the spring. My main issue is just planting them too thick. To plant, I just make a shallow trench about a quarter of an inch deep and scatter sow my carrot seeds. Then I cover these with a thin layer of earthworm castings. I like castings because they're light enough for newly emerging seedlings to easily push up through. They provide a very small dose of nitrogen for seedlings without the risk of burning, and they're overall a great addition to the soil. But this year I'm testing out two tweaks to my normal planting method to see if they help speed germination. And the first is covering that seeded row with something like a board, cardboard, or burlap. A fairly common suggestion to help improve carrot seed germination is to keep the seed covered with something like a board just until the seed starts to sprout. My grandpa always used a board and I've heard from quite a few people who just use cardboard or burlap over their seeds. I actually use the board method quite often in my summer sowings because at that time of the year, it tends to be much warmer and drier and I risk my seed and my soil drying out much more quickly. That board helps to keep the soil nice and moist and cool. I've actually never done it in the spring, so I'm curious to see if it affects my results at all. So I'm actually doing one of each. I've got a group of seeds covered with a board, 
a group of seeds covered with cardboard, and a group of seeds covered with burlap. The key with these is to peek under those materials every day because as soon as you see that first tiny little sprout of green, you wanna remove your material. I'm also testing out one row covered with my little mini greenhouses. Now I like this method a lot in the spring because when I wanna do early sowings of things like carrots or beets or radishes and it's still quite cool, Using little cloches or mini greenhouses can create a nice, slightly warmer, more humid environment that will hasten seed germination. A lot of you asked about this little row cover that I showed in my last video, and this one is from Gurney's. And I'm also actually using just the humidity dome off of one of my seed starting kits as well. But you could also easily create your own kind of homemade version of this just using a standard humidity dome and poking a few holes in the top. Now this one is heavy enough, I didn't have to weight it down. The one from Gurney's, I did pin into the soil with fabric pins just because we get a lot of wind this time of year and that will be blown right off if I didn't. Now I'm very curious to see between these little mini cloches and the burlap cardboard board test, which of these actually speeds up seed germination more. My gut is in the spring, it's gonna be the mini cloches, but we will see. Now with the cloches, as soon as those seeds germinate and are up, a quarter to a half of an inch, I will remove them. Now they're a little more forgiving than the board or the burlap in that I don't have to get them off immediately, but I don't like to leave them on long term. Now one option I do know for certain that helps with that thinning issue is pelleted seed. It is so much quicker and easier to plant out tiny seeds like carrots when they are pelleted. Now unfortunately, I don't have any pelleted carrot seed this year, but I'm just gonna show you this pelleted lettuce seed that I have because the carrots are gonna look very, very similar to the lettuce once they're covered in this coating. You can see how the process of planting and spacing correctly is helped along with these. But the pelleted seed is definitely a spendier option. And ultimately, if you wanna know the one thing that probably helps the very most with carrot seed germination, it is to keep the soil and newly emerged seedlings consistently moist and cool. Probably the biggest issue with lack of germination in carrot seeds is that the soil is allowed to dry out and or if it is too warm. Now maintaining moist, cool soil is definitely easier in some climates than others. Here in Ohio, for a spring planting, it's usually not too much of a challenge. In early spring, I'm usually dealing with it being too wet versus having the opposite problem, but it can be a very big issue when I am trying to plant carrots in the summer for a fall sowing. One of the easiest fixes is to install a drip irrigation system. With a kit like this one from Dripworks, I can just set up irrigation along each row of my carrots, turn it on for a short time every day, and make sure that that soil remains consistently watered. Now, while again, I don't need it this spring, I will be setting up my Dripworks kit for planting my carrots this summer. Now, I will be sharing all of the results of these test plantings. So if you're not already, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. And in the meantime, if anyone has any additional suggestions for improving carrot germination or making the task of thinning and spacing a little easier, be sure to drop a line in the comments below and let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.